I can't hear you. No, no, no. <laughs> and the only reason why I'm saying this is because I tried. I tried. It's a system. One time they came, and the one person that came is someone who I know personally, and I had to really put him up against the wall and they came, the one time. But someone in his position, I can't get him to come here. This brother could have been with the rest of the brothers that, um, I don't know where you hang out, Cape May or... <laughs> or uh, what's the name? The, the, um, the island, someone in those places. No, but he's right here with us. And I think that speaks a lot for this brother. And you don't have too many brothers like this, do you? No, Who is no. willing to come and be with us. This brother drove two hours to Boston before he got on the train. He's taking tomorrow off of his job just because he wants to be here with us. And these are the things that I want to point out. These are the things that when you find sisters and brothers making this kind of commitment and this kind of dedication and this kind of love, we have to respect them. And I think that we cannot be demonstrable enough in when we say our when we pledge our gratitude to this brother. Because I think yesterday one of the things he said, we don't speak the English language, we just express some of our feelings in the language. And this is exactly where I'm coming from. My brother, we deeply appreciate you coming here. So with that as a background, I'm asking you to welcome Dr. Edward Hyman. training program. I went through uh, Penn State University, got a PhD there, and then I went on to did a postdoctoral fellowship at a small hospital in Connecticut and so on and so forth. And what I practice on a day-to-day -day basis, my bread and butter, is essentially uh, uh, hypnosis, uh, family counseling, uh, psychosomatic medicine. That's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. But I also have a long and deep and perennial interest um, in the world's spiritual traditions, particularly those of Africa. Um, I've studied at different times in the Caribbean, and I've gone to India a couple of times studying, and most recently I took half a year off, and part of that time I spent in Ile Ife, West Africa, Nigeria, studying indigenous uh, religious traditions. Um, I, it was also important to know as I talk tonight about my background, where I'm coming from, uh, philosophically and so forth, is that part of my spiritual practice, part of my sadhana, is in yoga. And uh, yoga, uh, some of the principles of yoga, are associated with and underlie many different diverse spiritual traditions. Not only those in Africa, but also those in India. And as many of you know, there are very close historical and genetic links between the peoples of Africa and the peoples of India, particularly the Dravidian peoples. So in my work, I will bring together uh, not only my professional, clinical, scientific, etc. training, 
but also my own personal blood interest in the African uh, traditions. Because I have a firm belief, strong belief, that science is not our enemy, but it's the way science has been used in various ways that has made it appear to be our enemy. But we have to remember that we were the first scientists. And so we have to retake, we have to harness, again, this great force and bring it back to our own benefit and those of, of our people. So, with that in mind, tonight I'd like to focus on some of the following. First, the origins of Homo sapiens sapiens, us, modern man, thinking man, and how this is an, basically an African phenomenon and then it arose in Africa and then spread to other parts of the world. This is the scientific part of it. I'd also talk, like to talk about the origins of, moder of the modern religions and the spiritual traditions of the West, particularly those uh, in the uh, uh, three principal religions of the West. And I'd like to show that they are expressions and permutations of a deep almost unfathomable African unconscious intuition of the way the world process works. Um, the original early and later Western civilizations itself, as we'll focus on, are based upon an African template. These are all by way of introduction. These are all by way of setting the stage because what I'd like to focus on mostly tonight, what my primary interest is this time around, is showing that the actual living biological and biogenetic force that is the root of religion and spiritual genius, the phenomenon usually referred to as Kundalini, a symbol of which many of you are carrying around your neck right now, is actually deeply inwoven, interwoven in the human nervous system. And that human nervous system is based upon an African, is based upon a certain kind of biochemical process, melanin and neuromelanin, that is intimately associated with the development of all peoples, but in particular African peoples, in the sense that we were the first peoples, and are the template of all other peoples. Finally, I want to support the idea and the vision that human diversity and multiculturalism, as interesting and beautiful as they may be and interesting, are merely merely surface permutations of a deep African primordial genesis. All the peoples in the world are variations of Africans, whether they like it or not. I also want to speak to the African template or model of both everyone's, all peoples, uh, personal embryological or development in the womb and how that reflects our individual and our collective spiritual development. Now in order to do this I'm going to have to get in a little detail in some areas but I hope I can have your attention for doing that. And wherever I can and wherever I can think of it I'll try to allude to the scientific and scholarly uh, sources for which this comes from. So again before I can do this I have to set the stage with some scientific and historical and clinical material in order to make sense of some of the other stuff that comes later. I've gone to a number of different presentations and speakers, and while some of them are very exciting and very enthralling for me to hear, what I often feel is missing is uh, what is this based upon in terms of what's currently scientifically at least, if not acceptable, at least controversial. And so that's what I want to emphasize today, so that when you, when I leave here today, in addition to a, a vision or an image being fleshed out, you also have a sense that this is firmly rooted in the present scientific enterprise. Again, science is not the enemy. Science is not the enemy. Now, archaeology, anthropology, paleontology, and most recently, most recently, population genetics and mitochondrial DNA studies have firmly fixed, there's no more debate about it, have firmly fixed Africa as the cradle of the hominid, that is the, hom uh, the uh, homogenesis, where we come from, the hominid line, and that homo sapiens sapiens, all human beings are members of homo sapiens sapiens. In other words, there's no, there are no different races, there's only one race, 
and the template of that race is sitting in this room today.